don't swear that much. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay. Hello, guys, to the sixth episode of the Conversation Club. Um, today we have Sosh, Sosha or Sofia. <laughs> that's correct. Policiega. <laughs> Bolisonga. Yeah, Bolisega. but that's close enough. <laughs> the pronunciation in Polish is always really hard. <laughs> I don't know why I expected the intro music to just like burst Pop in film. my in my <laughs> headphones. I was like, because I always vibe to the music so much. I think it was such a good choice. And yeah, I, I just really, really like it. But I'm missing it now, but I'm going to, you know, re-listen again and a vibe then yeah i struggle with the intro like to find a song because you need to find i tried to find like something that has no copyright license or something oh, so yeah. when i found that i actually really liked it and hopefully no one comes out of nowhere and be like you know what that's mine yeah you should pay me for all, that all, <laughs> all the revenue you've made so much yeah of course <laughs> yeah so far it just goes all to that artist whoever it is but to be fair like your spotify like playlist and like library is so massive and it just it's such a shame that you can't use any of those songs you know that you love mm. so much you know like Elsa or Mentirosa or whatever like you you know and love these songs and whenever people hear them they're like that's a Kenny song you know what I mean yeah like the music part was something that I was really counting on but of yeah. course like the whole copyright thing it's just a struggle I think Spotify is like starting to promote uh, podcasts that you can put music from like music from Spotify or something like that yeah well they and should I guess you know like their their basic platform or you know like the foundation is music so it would make sense that if an artist agrees for the music to be put on the platform that other creators aka podcast creators can use that music as well yeah of course the problem is you get attached only to Spotify because if you try to put it on YouTube or you try to put it on iTunes uh, in the podcast platform in Google or whatever, they will not allow that because sure. maybe they don't have like the license to have the different artists. Okay, I get that. But hey, uh, Spotify is the superior platform anyways. So yeah. <laughs> hot take. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but like Joe Rogan, apparently since he got like uh, the, like the, how do you call it? The... Um, sponsorship or like the attachment to spotify uh, oh, he's sponsored by spotify like now all of his content goes to spotify and since he oh. moved i think his numbers have decreased quite a bit because it's also still, spotify I, I, I think i think it's still the number one podcast on the platform oh right? yeah of course it is but like him for i think I, I think for him was a little bit of a step back because you don't have platforms like youtube which specialize in videos so if he tries to when he tries to upload videos to spotify i try to watch a few and it's just weird like to watch a podcast video in spotify it's just like i, I think it's not really well like just for i think right now it's just for joe rogan i think it's oh. called vodcasts oh <laughs> yeah to be fair this is such a smart direction that they're going into yeah i really like spotify like It makes sense, but right now they're not really well established as YouTube with video platform. Yeah. So I think that's what they're what they're struggling, and they went straight for Joe Rogan. I okay. think so. I don't know if. Hopefully they will, but I think they're trying to monopolize like now the whole thing. You know, like Amazon and yeah. like start to diverse. I think every company, you know, like that's like their ultimate goal. Goal, which is like you know, world domination. <laughs> like they just want yeah. to be the the one and only platform that there is. Yeah, of course. But, yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, I, I guess... Um, oh, uh, some my disclaimer here. I know it's... it's Yeah, we already digressed a little bit. However, some people already told me when I said that I'm coming on today. They were like, oh, are you leaving? <laughs> Because apparently, like, some people think, you know, like, um, the people that you've interviewed oh. so far, <laughs> they all left Sheffield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... When I said, "Oh, I'm coming on," and they're like, "Oh my God, are you are you moving out?" And I was like, 
<laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. Um, so just a disclaimer for people who are listening, who do know me, I'm not going anywhere yet. <laughs> this is not just a podcast for people who will be, you know, gone forever. <laughs> people have associated this podcast to people that have dissed the, how do you say, dis- dessert? No, deserted? Yeah, deserted. Yeah, deserted yeah. Well, that's Sheffield. on you. That's on you, man. That's True. your choice of guests. <laughs> well, to be fair, it was, you know, like you started, you know, throughout the summer and, mm-hmm. um, Yeah, you know, like people like slowly had plans after the summertime. So then, you know, Jose left for Hull and Alex for Bristol and so on, so on. And then I guess it just was a domino effect that whoever you speak to just yeah. ends up leaving. Yeah. <laughs> Which to me might be a good thing if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> True, you were looking for jobs at China. Yeah, because also for Thomas, like I had no clue he was leaving. I was like, oh, let's have our episode then. Because yeah. a lot of people I had to like fit them in really quick. Great episode, by the way. Shout out to Thomas, because yeah. he did like he did an amazing job. I already said it to both you and him, but I really enjoyed that episode. And mm-hmm. I think he set the bar really high. So <laughs> <laughs> I would say keep your expectations really low for this one. <laughs> There are no, you know, <laughs> crazy stories or, you know, incredible life journeys in this one. <laughs> I think it's not only about like crazy stories. It's almost sometimes about opinions, like... You can have an opinion in something and sometimes it's something interesting. Yeah. Oh, I've got a lot of those. (laughs) I know you do. I've got a lot of opinions. (laughs) But yeah, shout out to Thomas, of course, if you're listening to this. I really hope he is. If you don't. (laughs) If if he's not, I'm going to be really offended. You motherfucker. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Um, But I I, I know that probably everyone who listens to you... um, you know like they know both of us or yeah. uh, whatever but you know if if anyone else joins in um should we you know say how we know each other <laughs> you know what i wanted to start with that but in a, instead of like discussing how we met each other yeah. what's the first memory and I'll, i can i can start i think i know the first memory quite Go clear Go for it so i remember we were um i was going to a game, to a game in king edwards and that was when Uh, my first year at volleyball okay. and I was going to the we had like a game or something and I got into the bus and then I saw you going with someone else and you had um how did, sweatpants and you know like the <laughs> my staple item <laughs> and the pink headphones and you were like with someone else or something and okay. you got in and I remember because I was like I think I know her but we've never talked okay. or spoke ever and Then I went into the game and you were in there and you were like really close to Jordan. And I think that was the day when when you told me while I was going outside. Oh, yeah, Kenneth, you're uh, Rejopachi or something. I really like oh, your surname. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, thank you. And I left. <laughs> that was my first memory. There. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I actually don't remember that at all. Well, no, I remember asking for your surname. Because I was so intrigued because <laughs> I've never seen because you have like an abbreviation on yeah. your Facebook. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> like, I've never seen anything like it. Like I know there like, I know there are a lot of international students, but this is new. <laughs> so I, I Googled it. I was like, I Googled like English to Spanish or well, Spanish to English. Like, how do you pronounce that? Uh-huh. And it's it um, came up with um, <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, "Huh? <laughs> like this doesn't sound right." So I think I I approached you then, and I was like, "How exactly do you pronounce your surname?" And um, I was off. I was way off. <laughs> yeah. So I changed that like to RJP because at least in Mexico, like when I try to say my like my name name or my surname, they always struggle with it. So I just left like one difficult part, just Kenneth <laughs> and RJP. It's RJP. And if I told them, like, oh, Kenneth Rejopachi, usually they, in Mexico, they never wrote my name correctly. Oh. None of them. <laughs> like, Wait, none so of the Kenneth what, did, or Rejopachi. Did you use it, like, in school as well? Or, the, like, the, the abbreviation? My name? Yeah. I, well, I use my name <laughs> well, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no shit, Kenneth. <laughs> no, but, like, the the abbreviation or, or whatever. Like, so, well, you just use the normal one. Just social media. Like, oh, okay. if someone tries to look for me, I'll just tell them, like, oh, Kenneth RJP. Okay. And that's it. Because okay, that's fair. Oh, because you were hard. just so popular that, you nah. know, like, you had so many people <laughs> asking you for your socials. <laughs> but how to write it? I think in here oh, yeah. they even write it better than they write it in Spanish because they always make the mistake of putting a T before they are. 
Ah. Uh, so tres I, I, Yeah, okay, I see that. But yeah, to be fair, like it is quite distinct. Like, I feel like everyone at this point knows if you changed it now, there would have been a rebellion. Like, <laughs> and everyone who you know is like, this is not your surname. This is not what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> yeah, like I think like, yeah, Rejopachi, RJP just makes sense it's a it's a nice surname that's what that's well that's probably why i you know like why i approached you because i was just intrigued and at that point i think um i I didn't really know many people in volleyball well it was our our first year Mm -hmm. uh for both of us i started my master's at that point and um if it was one of your first games then well it was probably like october ish times so literally our first month in the club and uh, I think I was trying really hard to, you know, like make connections with people. Mm-hmm. And you probably seemed like a nice guy. And, and nice that's guy. why I was like, you know what, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to approach him. <laughs> uh-huh. Although uh, it, about first memories. So uh, for those listening who do not know, Kenneth and I, we both started in development together. Yeah. In uh, volleyball development. Yeah. The Sheffield <laughs> University Volleyball Club. Uh, we were both put in development at first. And I remember you from one of the first like development sessions. I don't have a very like specific memory. I just know that you were there. Mm-hmm. And I think that w- that was probably one of the sessions that you and Jordan got scouted for uh, men's second team. Uh, because then you just disappeared (laughs) and then you know like I got closer to Jordan but I remember from one of those sessions I don't know why because it's a contradiction to what I thought later that you were a really nice guy (laughs) but in one of those first sessions for some reason I thought I um that you like you didn't like me or something really yeah (laughs) what you never told me this (laughs) I I got like really hostile vibes (laughs) and I was like oh my god (laughs) I don't know why maybe it's you know like the initial nervousness of of, um, you know, like joining a club, it was one of the first sessions. Mm-hmm. Everyone was trying to prove themselves. No one knew each other. And uh, yeah, it was probably it was probably wrong. I know it was wrong, actually. To be fair, like people, when they don't know me, they think I'm like, a re- if I'm in an environment that I don't know anyone, uh, I become really serious. And it might even look hostile, but it's never like, it's not because of being hostile, but it's more because of being shy. Oh. That I just like, just try like to stay really serious. Throughout yeah, a the little whole bit thing. like distant, I'd say. Even yeah. though like you're you're not really because you're like you're very approachable. It just like maybe you don't seem like you are. I never initiate. Like I never start a conversation. Mm-hmm. I think at least like in uh, groups in some in a place that I'm new to, I never start a conversation. But not because I don't want to know people. Because I don't like the awkwardness of me approaching someone, oh. kind of. But you're like you're such an open guy, though. Like I feel like anyone who you do approach, like they they love to have a chat with you because you don't just talk about you know like the weather or whatever. You always come up with the weirdest questions and like very like <laughs> insightful <laughs> opinions. So I don't get why you know you know like you don't make the first step. I don't know. I think I might be like a bit shy at the beginning. Then. Like if the I start come, talking, come then, crumbling I, down. then I never stop. Yeah. <laughs> Hence the podcast. Hence the podcast. It's like yeah. the ultimate platform to never let you shut up. <laughs> yeah, true. It's a monopoly here. Yeah. I can speak as much as I want. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We absolutely love it. Yeah, but like initially, that was my like that was my my first mm-hmm. um, kind of. Uh, Oh, what do you call it? Oh, impression. I, impression. Thank you. That was my first impression that, you know, like maybe he doesn't like me very much. And then, you know, like you and Jordan got moved up. And then um, to be fair, like in our like in our first year, we didn't really have a very good like contact. Like I, I saw you at games and I I think we might have had a couple of chats, but I don't I don't remember when we started like to actually hang out like the first time that I'm like. I, maybe like Jordan's birthday. Well, as you can say, we have like a big history. Like we've known each other for a while now. Yeah. Like it's been ages. Yeah. Like two, or three well, years. Well, or this more. is our four, fourth, fourth year, year running. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. Shit. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's time to cut this thing. <laughs> it's been too long. This is why the podcast. This is yeah. where I never see you again. <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> this this prompts me to leave sheffield <laughs> um okay so 
that was the introduction of how we met. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I am a very talkative person, so I'm just going to digress oh, yeah, that's a fine. lot. So yeah, that's I really okay. hope this, this doesn't turn into like one of those really, really long episodes, but it might. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's fine. That's fine. So here comes the first question. Oh my gosh. I know. So what do you think... <laughs> of <laughs> I'm bringing something what, super complex. What do you think the of the current economy? global economy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you. It was the episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's our time, people. <laughs> thank you for coming. Um, I think we we like some. Uh, you grew up in Poland, of course, and you've yes. told me like you grew up uh, like in kind of like a religious environment. To a degree, yes. To a degree. Me, I think, like, to a really high degree. (laughs) Okay. I think so. Well, so. I like if we compare, then we might we might have actually grown up in the the same degree. But let's let's see. Yeah, like uh, at least with me, like my whole family, almost like you know, like aunts, cousins, yeah. uh, grandpa, they are all Christian, evangelic, evangelistic Christian. Kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, I think they so. Are, they, they, I grew up like that. I don't know with you if it's the same. Um. Well, it's the same that my entire family is religious. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a different branch of Christianity. So I'm mm-hmm. Catholic, born okay. and raised. Um, and, and I think like people say like baptized Catholic. I don't know what that like. It, I think like other There's branches. A lot of branches. Yeah, I think other now. branches also like baptize people and, and, mm, yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, Catholic and and my entire family. Um, also Catholic. I actually cannot name a single person who wouldn't like I I know that there are people who like are not as religious or are questioning but I I cannot name a single person in my family who wouldn't identify as catholic really yeah like the do you usually like do all of them follow like the what do you call it religion by like um, uh, the, like, like step by step kind of thing like the general steps um I think it I think it changes quite a lot. I think when I was younger, um we used to be very on the ball with mm-hmm. these things. You know, mm-hmm. like I don't know, do you call it a service or a mass yeah. every Sunday, right? Um <clears throat> pardon me. So every Sunday, uh mass or uh yeah, we would go to the service in the morning. It's usually like an hour thing. Um my mom would like teach us to like pray in the evenings. Um, it was a very short prayer, but still pray in the evenings. Um, you know, like we would go to confession. I think this is something that you guys don't have, right? Yeah, no confession. Oh no. my God. It's a traumatizing it event. <laughs> my God. Like you basically, like, I'm sorry. Like you're eight years old, right? You have, um, yeah. So like, I think there are like different stages of being like becoming Catholic, I guess, or like catholicism as as a general so like like Mm -hmm. you're baptized and then you have something that we call the first communion i think so like this is when you're like kind of like a part of the church when you're like eight or something um and then after that you're allowed to confess like confess your sins which is like even when you say it it sounds so serious and when you're little like <laughs> you you're so i guess i i've never confessed but like when they say like oh yeah you need to ask for uh, i don't know for something like for forgiveness or something when you're little you're like what am I going to say sorry about? And then you like start to say sorry about everything. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> well, it's just, so, but yeah. like, what, what can you do when you're like seven or eight? Mm-hmm. You know, like there's, there's only like small little bits that you actually, uh, like would be considered quote unquote wrong. But like, you're a child, like, for example, I, I would like, when I was four, I used to, four or five, I used to like steal from my, my brother's piggy bank. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cause, cause you know, like he was getting like his like weekly allowance or something. And I, I wouldn't get any because I was four, which yeah. you no know, makes sense. And I would like, I would go to his piggy bank and literally like steal his money, <laughs> which is like, yeah, objectively wrong. But um, I was four, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm not going to like be eight and, you know, like go to an old guy in a dress and be like, yeah, four years ago, I stole a bunch of money. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, yeah, like from the age of eight, I think you're like allowed to confess, which is a very like and, and they do prompt you to do it. So I would do it when I was younger. I was um a little bit more like into the whole idea of church i guess it's because like my family was really into it 
Um, so I, I really did believe that, you know, like everything that I'm doing, like I'm going to mass, I'm, I'm praying and I'm confessing that it will make me a good person and it will make me like it will get me to heaven, I guess. Um, so I would I would confess every month. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, because I did, like, like that's what they tell you. Like you should confess like once a month or at least twice a year, at least twice. A, that's what like that's what's in our holy book i don't even know like, yeah, like i think it's a testament or whatever uh-huh. yeah that like you should you should con- uh, confess at least twice twice a year and and you know i would go and say oh like i lied so like, oh yeah well you're eight like children lie yeah. <laughs> big deal but it's you know like but like right now i'm like oh like th- those were so silly but to think about it that i was eight or nine and i would go and i would be so stressed and i would tell this completely strange like this this stranger right stranger in a dress Mm -hmm. everything that i've done and like the you know like the personal details from my life yeah fair enough like i didn't have much going on but still it's it's weird now that i think about it like it's like is it like asking for forgiveness kind of thing kind of to that guy not to that guy so i think the way that they explain it is like he's kind of like the middle man right Mm -hmm. like he's kind of so you speak to him and he he speaks to the man upstairs <laughs> which is just i wonder what they do like do they follow their guts or do they actually like do they read the bible and then be like oh then this is the answer kind of thing like where do they get the rules of like i'm actually speaking to god right now well this is uh, this is the big problem that i have with uh, with my religion uh I, I never know how to say it like correctly but um i think other branches of Christianity, they can be a lot more flexible in terms of, you know, like how you approach that, let's say conversation or whatever, like you can use your own words or whatever with Catholicism. It's very much like following the exact words. You've got, you know, those almost like rhymes that you use all the time. Mm -hmm. Like you learn it all by heart, right? So like I would go so uh, you probably heard it in movies a lot like you go into that like place where you confess and you start with forgive me father for i have sinned yeah right like and like you've got basically you you need to learn so much because every single part of your participation in church there's like yeah there's like paragraphs of phrases that you should know like a script more basically or less. Yeah. yeah and and this is kind of like so with other religions I know people kind of treat it more like as a conversation with God, right? Or whatever is out there. Um, and with with my religion is very much you need to follow that script mm-hmm. or you're not being a truth Catholic. At least that's how I interpret it now. Um, so, yeah, like when I was eight, that was the first communion. When you're 16 or whatever, you go through confirmation, I think it's called. That's another one. Then when you're like a little bit older... Like you enter the church as an adult and then you've got, um, you know, like your marriage is one of those, like, I think they're called sacraments. Um, So, yeah, it's definitely, yeah, just to kind of go back to, yeah, it was a pretty religious, uh, religious environment. My, my parents, um, they, I'm I'm pretty sure they still go to church every Sunday or they try to, Mm -hmm. um, they went online through COVID, look at my parents, you know, being like very advanced and digital. My parents too, same, (laughs) they they attend church quite often and also online. Okay. Like, were they like very excited to go to different churches, you know, through the Oh no, they were going to the same ones. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) gosh, they know my, my mom would call me like, you know, on Sundays be like, guess where I was in church today. (laughs) I was like, where? She was Canada. <laughs> I was like, what? It was like the Tinder passport for her. <laughs> yeah, honestly, she for was just church. like, she was so excited. And um, yeah, so she would sometimes say like, oh, I was in London today. <laughs> I was like, no, mom, you weren't. You were just watching a video stream. Um, but yeah, like they do kind of follow, they, they used to follow these rules a lot more strict. Um, like, for example, on Fridays, like in my religion, you're not supposed to eat meat on Fridays mm-hmm. at all. Um, so we used to be quite strict about that, but not anymore. Uh, it kind of like fizzled out, I guess. And, and so did my personal belief. Um, yeah. Cause when I, when I was younger, as I mentioned, I was quite, I, I did believe all of that and not to say that I don't anymore, 
uh, but I, I don't really attend church anymore. I don't take part of the sacraments. I don't know if my family is going to listen to this. Um, maybe we can have, maybe you can create a little bit of a cut version for me, <laughs> you know, like a, a bit of a shorter one. Um, but you know, like I don't really, uh, yeah, if I don't have to, I, I don't go to church. I do it mostly for their sake. Cause I know it makes them feel a little bit more at ease and mm -hmm. at peace. And for me, it's not a big sacrifice to go to church for like one hour when I'm at home, if it makes them feel better, kind of, you know, like about their family's emotional or spiritual well-being. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of don't believe in that anymore. However, I do always say that I follow the mental gui guidelines, I get, well, not mental, um, Like the moral, the, uh, yeah. moral, yeah, mm -hmm. was close enough. The moral guidelines. So I, I do believe that the church, the Catholic church kind of, you know, like they had an impact in, into how I view uh, and how I treat other people. So, you know, like the obvious don't kill, but you know, like mm -hmm. just be oh, nice. Oh shit, I forgot about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> just like, we, we can cut it in post, <laughs> post production, anyone? <laughs> Um, yeah, but, um, you know, like be nice to people, don't yeah. lie, uh, you know, try to be a good person, try to help. Um, so I think like, those are like the, the morals that I took away from it. And I do try to live by those, but at the same time, I recognize that the majority of re religions out there have those exact same morals that tell you to just be a good person. So yeah, that's my that's my take on it. What about you? Yeah, I want to hear about your I was your going to say all, like the same thing. Like in here, I, I don't consider myself Christian anymore. Like I think I already like I'm not part of that right yeah. now. Like um, I think my the thing is like you were saying like sometimes I do stuff just so my like uh, I don't make my parents feel bad. Like yeah. kind of in a way like questioning what they have believed for a long time because when i think about it it's like imagine if someone comes and you have believed in this thing for years and years yeah. and years which they they really don't get involved with other people's lives that's why like i kind of like like i respect that about them like they believe and they are themselves and they are nice and that's it but they don't try like to get into other people's lives and be yeah, like they're you not need forcing to believe anyone this. yeah Uh, but uh, I started like to extrapolate out of like the Christian life and like the, the beliefs. I'm not saying that I don't believe in something after death. I still yeah, I same. think I'm I, in a bit of like. I I still believe there's something more. I think there would. It's like agnostic theist and yeah. agnostic atheist. Yeah, like. I think your your housemate mentioned that like last time, and I I think I I do relate a lot to that. That like I want to believe there's something more. I just don't know what it is so i would mm -hmm. rather question the re the religions which are established right now rather than just subscribe to one of them completely and i just think it's a it's it's a formal way of saying i don't know <laughs> Pretty <laughs> don't know the answer <laughs> Pretty <Check>. much, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah i was like i was thinking like in, something you believe in and you and i go there and i like start to questioning all of their Like, imagine, ah, so this is like a bit harsh. Like, imagine if you think there's something after life and you have believed that maybe that's so much that if someone comes and tells you, like, there's actually nothing, you know, like that it, moment, that existential crisis, right? and something that. Like, it's I devastating. Like it, it must be. Yeah. So, no, I, I get that. And, and I, I relate that you kind of do it for, like, someone else in a way, but, like, Yes, but it's all connected. So like you do it for your parents, but by doing that, like your parents are at ease. And if your parents are at ease, you feel better with yourself and you feel like, you know, of you're course. not disappointing them in a way. And um, is like, are you trying to have those conversations like outside of your family? Yes. And like, that's kind of what matters, you know, like with people who are willing to have those conversations about religion, mm -hmm. like you can always have that chat and, and you know, acknowledge that not everyone agrees, but with family, it's such a sensitive topic, especially if they are quite religious. And more because you, it's not like you, you go and dislike them. You like, you like your family. You really love your family and everything. And the, 
I think the least, and even with your friends, the least thing, the least you want to do is to actually like harm them, make them feel bad and things yeah. like that. And I think like if I go and just tell them what you believe is not true, like not like that, but probably a little bit more sensitive from my part. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be true. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll just be like an awkward thing to to tell them because also like it Im- like the fact of involving death is like the people you've known that they are death right now they're probably not in heaven they're probably just yeah like in the ground yeah. and, and, it, and it sounds harsh like it's something it, harsh and you I don't you don't want to have that conversation no, at least no of course me. not because it just means that like so, like once you die just, you just disappear into nothingness and that's it like that's you done like your conscious and subconscious thoughts like your entire mind your entire personality just disappears so yeah it's a comforting thought to think that there is something beyond and there might be mm-hmm. we don't know but you know from like a let's say like a biological sense like point of view or like medical however you want to say it like there there was i i might be completely wrong but you know like if if brain is if your brain is dead then that's it there's no activity there yeah so there's no way of proving that there is actually something out there and it's it's daunting yeah there that there will come a day when you're like you know you're here like you are aware of your body slowly getting like um older and older and you know like like you slowly destroying it <laughs> whatever <laughs> um and but you know like still in your head you're like yeah but i'm me right like i'm just myself like i still have my mind i still have my thoughts and then one day that might be gone <laughs> yeah this yeah it's the thing like there's nothing after the thing is that we don't know so Jesus, that's a heavy topic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I also want to know about, you know, because I said that I was quite involved with the church when I was younger. Mm-hmm. What about yourself? Like when you grew up in that environment, were you ever really engaged in it? Or when did you realize basically that you're not really, that you you don't believe it? Mm, I think I start. I started to like just do whatever my parents were doing at the beginning. So yeah. it was more like a following up rather than do you... Like, I never got the question, do you actually believe this? Ah, <laughs> you know? They just assumed. Like, yeah, I think everyone assumes that you just do, even when you're little, when you don't have, like, the actual, like, like mental... I wouldn't say ability, like, the, like be able to take that decision of actually yeah. believing in something. Um, and then I think throughout... I think in high school is when I started like more to doubt a little bit why I couldn't do some stuff that okay. like how and I couldn't try. high school is what ages in Mexico? Oh no, middle school, sorry. Middle school. Uh, between 15 and 12, 12, 15, I think. Okay. And then up to up to that point, you were like, you know, attending church regularly. Oh, I attended, ch- I, I attended church until I finished high school, until I came to the UK. Okay. Even in the Same. UK, I went a couple of times. <laughs> But then I, I went just to confession going. here one time. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I, I never went to church, but I attended confession here uh-huh. one time. And it was honestly like, because back home we've got like those like, I don't even know how to explain it. We've got those like little wooden sheds in the in the building of the church. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, the, I don't know what they're called. Confessionals, I think. But here, oh my God, the like the, you know, the technology. It was like a, it was like a really nice white room with, you know, like this like foggy glass and like i was sitting refreshments on the side <laughs> prosecco it's great um yeah and you know like the the priest was on one side of the foggy glass with like whatever technology to make uh, so that i could hear him and then i was on the other side it was a very luxurious experience yeah. i would say you know like even and, and back home we've got like wooden sheds <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's again a digression. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so you attended up and yeah, up yeah, until you came to the UK like, uh, uh, until I was in Mexico, um, and then when they started to say like, oh, you cannot do this, you cannot that, uh, you cannot go out to these places. I started like, well, I want to like. Oh, was well, so it your can't. parents were telling you that? Yeah. Okay. And also like the environment, like in family in general, they were like more like, don't do this. But I don't think they were doing it like in a sense of you don't have to try it i think they were more scared of like i think i should probably give more context like i I, my family came from guatemala and they were like 
they, they, they struggle to get out of the country, for example, most of them. Okay. Uh, so they have seen like a lot of people like go into different kind of vice that didn't really help them. But I don't think it was just because of the vice. It was also because of the circumstances. And of course, the government maybe didn't help and gave them the opportunities, which I yeah. think in education. Uh, by that, I mean like... Uh, so, for example, in Latin America, the education system, the teachers don't care about the students as easy as that. Like, they okay. just are like, do whatever you want. If you want to fight, fight. But yeah, that was like a little bit uh, out of topic. No, no, no. I'm, I'm always very interested. Like, if, if you ever want to tell a story about, you know, like how your family got to Mexico, I think a lot of people, I, I don't know if a lot of people know or if you're willing to share it, but I don't, I don't think I've ever heard that story. Mm. Probably after. Probably okay. After. Yeah, so... I, in, in like summary it was really difficult for them like to go out like they saw a lot of things going in their own like uh, where they were living so they were scared because if i tried something and i got into the vice kind of of the thing they they thought like the vice would be the one that would like make me go down in a right wrong path that's how they would call it you know mm -hmm. like i don't know if i tried alcohol I'll become like an alcoholic and just be around the streets asking for this money. This is going to for... take over your life. Uh -huh, right. Exactly. But was uh, it uh, was it when you came to the UK or was it before? Oh, no, that was when, you know, when you start trying alcohol. Okay. And yeah. they're like, oh, yeah, don't do this, don't do that. And like things related around alcohol. Um, then I think uh, when I knew I didn't really was into like the whole religion stuff probably yeah second year of uni i think like completely just gave i up doubted on it. before i was like a little i did i did whatever i wanted to do to be honest <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like i did a lot of stuff that i wasn't <laughs> supposed to do uh, come back to the story about the fosters rum and tequila <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i downed that shit <laughs> And you made, made everyone else down it as well. <laughs> yeah. So any, if anything, it's, Kenny is a bad influence. Shit, yeah. Religion. <laughs> <laughs> I blame it's it on that. Yeah. It's like, I was forced to do it because I need to make up for all the experiences missed because of my religion. <laughs> uh, although I think there's like a bit of thing, like if they hold you back to not try things and you get into it, you can actually, it can actually be worse because you get full on that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. You know, like it's like the rebellion phase. Um, I actually had a, had a chat about it with my housemates the, the other day that, cause they asked, Oh, like, how did you, you know, like how did your parents approach drinking for example? So even though like my parents are uh, religious, they're very liberal people and mm. they're like, they're very reasonable as well. Uh, they they base a lot of their decisions on logic rather than emotion or you know spirituality um so i like when i was little uh, i don't know if like they're gonna get in trouble for it or whatever but hey. <laughs> so when i was little um you know like my mom used to let me try even like the foam from the beer for yeah. example just so that i can you know like taste it a little bit or if they had a little bit of wine my mom would let me you know like take a couple of sips of the wine or the drink that she had or again beer just so that I can like taste it see if I like it I didn't I was small um and but you know like they kind of like introduced me to alcohol as being normal right like something that adults have because mm -hmm. well, they can because they want to because it's allowed from time to time right and um, so when I like entered let's say my like uh, teens so like what should have been like my rebellious stage when you know I, I was supposed to like sneak out and start drinking or whatever uh, I never did that because like my parents introduced me to alcohol as you know like it's not something forbidden it's something normal if you want to have it just tell us and we will you know like we will give you that opportunity to try it uh, just let us know so I never like I never went through like that stage where I was you know like coming back home completely drunk and you know like sneaking out from my parents house and just uh, you know embarrassing myself basically I, I know a lot of people go through it but just that that was my experience with it yeah I think it's when even when you see like a, a sign saying do not touch this yeah you have it's the all the temptation fruit. to just exactly to just touch it and i think it happens with whatever is like completely forbidden okay like yeah. if something is comp well 
in some cases, of course, like not not talking about the whole thing, but when someone tells you don't do this, don't do that, it's like more like I it happens to me. I think quite often. I don't know if that's good or not, but I think uh, it's just curiosity to a degree. Yeah, but it's some, somehow like I don't know if it's, it will sound weird, but I'll put an example like inspires not inspires me, it makes me do it. So I was going to jump off a waterfall. Oh, and yeah. I was not going to do it like for 10 minutes and then uh, run. Uh, my girlfriend said like, uh, hey, don't do it. Come down. And I was like, oh shit, I'm jumping <laughs> I'll now. I'll show her now. Le- literally <laughs> two minutes after. I was like. Hmm. So actually we, um, we owe it all to Ron. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Shout out to Ron. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, then like. Uh, second year of uni I started like to yeah know that I was not really into like the whole thing I, I in conclusion for me right now is like don't be an asshole yeah that's pretty like much what right? I tried to follow just just like be be a nice person and do you need to put a label on it yeah I, no not really uh I think uh, yeah as because uh, I I don't want to shame people who are you know like in they they do believe because because for a lot of people it's a uh, uh, it's a source of like their peace, of peace to a yeah. degree, and and I wouldn't never I would never want to take take that away from someone. But as long as you know, like someone can have like a reasonable discussion uh, about why they're why they believe what they believe, and and if they accept other people's opinion, that's that's pretty much everything that matters, right? Yeah, like if you don't get involved in other people's life, yeah, if you just. And there's this this thing that they say, like, lead by example. Like, if you're living the life that you feel at peace, just be like that. Don't, like, don't get stressed of getting into other people's life. If you just show it, people will be like, oh, actually, I, yeah. I want that peace or I want to do, I want to do this or do that. How did you get that? Yeah, like, like yeah, people will just, just ask about uh, your experiences and how, how you lead your life. So, I, yeah, I guess that's, that's a really good way of putting it. Yeah. But then again, if you think about it, obviously, like I, I do like those discussions, but we're both coming from the same point of view, right? So like yeah. we're both people who like grew up in quite a religious environment and then, <laughs> then decided to kind of abandon it. So I wish we kind of had like a third person, you know, someone who's still like religious or something and um, someone who would like tell us, oh, actually, like your point of view is questionable or yeah. something right because we're just gonna agree with each other which i love <laughs> i love being right but <laughs> i'm not always right <laughs> the problem is finding the person that it's reasonable to have these types of conversation uh, it's, it, it comes again to saying like you know what what you believe in is might be is the fact of saying like might not be true and maybe there's nothing after death i think that's why at least with me that's when i when i realized that that was like the thing that I think scared me most kind of thing like okay. where I'm like oh shit there's probably like nothing after and I you know like that feeling of like now I know this might be a little bit controversial for sometimes like to grasp it and yeah. actually talk about it uh, yeah. but yeah it will be interesting to to have someone yeah so maybe you know like next episode or whoever uh whoever comes along you can you can bring back the topic of religion and see if you know like there is someone who actually believes and you know practices their yeah. their mad, uh, their their religion in a way and you know see their their opinion and then you know compare the two episodes if I, if anyone ever wants to come back to mine <laughs> just be like this one just gets deleted off the platform <laughs> should we do after like this whole morality thing should we do yeah. a would you rather Oh yes, 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 we yeah, should. Oh, so do you, do you want to lead it? Oh, this is just you know like uh, getting a little bit <laughs> more lighthearted, let's say. <laughs> yeah, just one sec. I forgot it gets really dark. It really <laughs> does get dark. That's we fine. can we can fix it in post. <laughs> this is probably what of like because I I'm quite. Um, I'm quite into podcasts uh, myself and like one of my favorite things that people you know like hosts say on post podcast is like we can fix it in post <laughs> which is you know like when they say something stupid uh-huh. it's like just post production just cut it out just cut, cut it out, it out. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be expecting a draft version coming my way <laughs> um, yeah the light is on now if you wanted how, to know <laughs> how, how, how far in are we I have no clue Okay. 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Okay, that's I fine. Think so. Okay, we've got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Okay, I brought just a couple. Okay. Which I think... Oh, no, I just brought two. No. <laughs> a couple, a couple. So it is a yeah, couple. I, w- I was correct. You're very literal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you rather mm-hmm. know the date of your death or cause of your death? Oh. Oh, damn. Uh. <laughs> I, I wish everyone could see his face right now. <laughs> yeah, so she's confused. She's having an existential crisis right now. <laughs> I am. I am a little bit. <laughs> I think... I think I would prefer to know the day of my of my death so that I can I can do everything like I can finish up everything that I want to finish up by yeah. that point and you know like if if it's in the next two years or something I'm not I'm not keeping up with my savings account <laughs> like I don't need that <laughs> yeah same. right you know so like I'm just gonna I'm gonna use all of my savings move to Bali or whatever uh no I like let's be honest I'll probably move to Latin America who am I trying to kid um and then you know just live out the rest of my my days and then on the day be extremely paranoid that everything I do will lead to my death <laughs> true oh but that's only like for one day the good thing about knowing just the date is that you can do whatever you want like you can walk and Show the finger to, I don't know. No, no, let, let's not be aggressive. Let's not be aggressive. Like, let's, walk. Keep, let's keep it classy, people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know, like, just go to the, uh, I don't know, to a place with tigers yeah. or with whatever, and you know you will not die. Yeah, that's true. I was going to choose the same thing because you okay. can do whatever you want, like jump from a plane and don't die because it's not your day. <laughs> 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 True. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. That you can just kind of, you know, look in the face of danger yeah. and know that it's you're gonna be fine. And the cause of death makes you really paranoid. Like if they tell you, like, oh, you're going to die because of a uh, uh, football, yeah. I would never go around <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> football in my it. life. <laughs> you become so paranoid. You know, like, can you imagine just going to the park and there's like kids playing with a football and you're just like running away screaming? Sure. <laughs> being like, yeah. No. The bad thing about the maybe that knowing the dates is that you will always feel that you never did enough, I think. You know, when yeah. you're like, oh, but I forgot to do this and I forgot to do that. I needed more time. Absolutely. Or, or you know, like fi- imagine finding out that it's way sooner than you expected, right? That is True. that is like in, yeah, three to four years or say, I don't know, two, two days, right? Oh. <laughs> and you're just like, what? Like, it's, it's just, it's, it's such a daunting thought. Like, again, like death, man. Yeah. <laughs> Scary shit. <laughs> Oh shit, I got another one of death. So death? <laughs> <It's just laughs> I mean, uh, for everyone uh, listening, um, we are approaching Halloween, so this is very much on theme. <laughs> you know, True. death and skeletons. And <laughs> so this is the next one. Okay. I think this is, this is the one I really liked. Okay. So it's be in famous in history books or be forgotten after your death. Ooh. Oh, I think it comes down to how vain people are. <laughs> and um, I think I would prefer to be in famous in history books. Now, here's the thing. What this is what you? I was thinking. They're not saying why you're in famous in right? history books. No, but it's Imagine like- <laughs> if you were in famous because, I don't know, you, I don't know, you... Ah, Something really bad. You know, imagine if, you if someone the Pope. asked, <laughs> <laughs> like that's funny. Like true. or like imagine if someone asked Hitler the same question. And yeah, true. He, exactly. And exactly. Then he, he went for the very extreme option. <laughs> you know what? Literally in the sixth episode. Ep- epi- episode. <laughs> episodes. Okay, there, Barcelona. <laughs> um, the name Hitler has come three like in oh three my episodes. God. Yeah. <laughs> what an infamous guy! He really did a great job. <laughs> Every time I I listen to him, I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, but like if you think about it, because. Yeah, I think there was like a saying, and I'm gonna butcher it. That like every villain is a hero. <sighs> in their own story, like history is written by winners. 
Oh, yeah. But I but think that that's what maybe you're trying like to I'm say gonna, too. I'm going to Google. I know it's probably not what you're supposed to do it on podcast, but mm. I'm going to do it anyway. No, that's um, fine. I'll probably speak about this one. Like, uh, like if you see every moment in history has been like told by the person that wins. So you literally have no villains. You have just the winners and the villains are the yes. ones that they just lost. And that's it. So... Or may, yeah, is. maybe it is. It, every villain is a hero of his or her own, her own uh, his or her own story. Um, but I also think I I saw that it's like a villain is like a hero who like gets to like a, uh, I can't remember now, so we'll fix it in post. <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. I feel like not everyone who just becomes infamous like sets out with the wrong intentions if you think about it like yeah people who are objectively terrible people i'm sure in their head not everyone you know started out being like oh i'm gonna you know just de destroy the fate the the fate of humanity or whatever yeah. like hitler they think they're doing something good like yeah. to some extent yeah they're they they always have selfish but to a yeah, like in their own mind, positive. Uh, we can put Donald Trump in, in for an example. Like yeah. I, I know what he wanted to do is get all the immigrants out and build the wall and everything. And I think in his mind, he was like actually because he classified like immigrants from Latin America as rapists, as I don't know thieves, whatever, all the other things. Yeah. But in his own mind, he's like, oh, maybe that's that's how I think he believed which I don't support, of course, uh, because he's generalizing. Um, he was like, oh, I need to give more opportunities of a better life to the uh, every uh, American that is living in here or whatever. So that's how he justified like his whole like racist comments or because something needed to be done. Let's make a great... Uh, no, how is it? Let, let's, let's make America Let's make great. America great again. <laughs> yeah. So I guess like... you're about that. <laughs> <laughs> So that, I guess that's like what you're saying, like in their own mind, they're like the yeah. heroes of the story. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's true. So uh, here's a question. When do you think you can acknowledge that you're actually the villain? Like I, I could be a villain right now and I don't know. And I think like I'm doing things correctly, yeah. but actually I'm just fucking everything up. I think maybe when you when you can see that like your actions actually have like a negative impact on a large amount of people not even a large amount of people like just on anyone like if mm -hmm. if you set out to do something good and then suddenly something bad comes out of it then oh yeah but then like would i classify that as a villain not really this is a very tricky question it is a tricky question what, what would you like out of that th those two would you prefer to be forgotten or the or the infamous person i think i thought it in a less complex way like I was like, oh, if I become famous, I don't know why I'm becoming famous for. If they don't remember me, it's because I can do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> Again, coming up with you know, like you can just you really want to do it all, don't you? Can <laughs> like imagine if no one is going to remember you, you're just going. You can do whatever you want, and the moment you die, that's it. Like you will. Yeah. Not. Although, but when you die, if you go to history, would you really care? Not really. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, that's a that's a really good uh, you know statement. That mm -hmm. like at some point, ev everyone will be forgotten. Yeah. Like if we're like if we look like way ahead of us, and and I think you know like every single year, I think people are being forgotten from history books. You know, oh, yeah, of course, because there's you know like there's more history to write, and um, yeah. So actually, I. You know, from a very selfish point of view, I think I would actually lean towards like your way of thinking. Like, if I am forgotten, yeah, sure, it sucks. Well, if I'm, oh, are we saying forgotten completely? Like, even by, you know, like my friends and family uh, or just from the overall history? I think it's by everyone. Like, you die and not even your dog oh, will go to your grave. <laughs> <laughs> well, dogs don't live that long anyway. So. <laughs> You dogs. No, I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm a dog person i swear <laughs> um yeah but yeah if if i was if i were just to be forgotten by everyone it would have been very sad but 
would you care? But, yeah, I wouldn't I care think, because yeah, I wouldn't I be there. Okay, yeah. yeah, I'm going for that one then. I don't want people to remember me for the wrong thing because it might be something silly. You know, like, yeah, <laughs> slapping the Pope. <laughs> where, where did you even come up with that? I have no clue. <laughs> we, we're still keeping it like weird and religious. And religious. <laughs> like, who knows? Maybe the Pope is into that. <laughs> Jesus. This is what's going to get us cancelled. <laughs> Right. Um. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I would think be forgotten. Yeah, I think I would choose be forgotten as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if like I don't know if you have any like questions that we should get to or do you want to do because um, I again for everyone listening I'm trying to have my podcast moment and um, I. It, because I am kind of a podcast enthusiast and there were a couple of ones that I listened to where people took took like quizzes mm. and personality tests and I thought um what a great what a great opportunity uh to test how Mexican Kenneth is have I told like why do I get like th these tests <laughs> like um, why am I no, actually being you, tested go ahead explain for... it so I was originally born in Colombia lived three months in there then moved to Guatemala lived one year in there and then moved to Mexico for the rest of my life. So when they ask me, where are you from? Because of the way I speak and the culture I know, I say Mexico. But it <laughs> happens that there was this person that I told her that I was born in Colombia originally. And they started to call me fake Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not necessarily wrong. <laughs> So also, now I've been tested, if I may. To be fair, like, it's it's a mixture of, you know, like, where you're from and, and your heritage as well. So I guess it, like, it really comes into play. Like, obviously, the most important factor is how you identify. And you identify as Mexican. Yeah. Um, yeah. But not, not, not because of what I know, just because of the way I speak, literally. It's just really? because of the way I speak. Like... What about I, the the other culture? I would assume, although, like, what is your like? I know how to cook a few of Mexican things, but the same thing, the same way I learned how to cook Mexican, this I can learn some Colombian or some English or some, you know, okay. like I think for me it's just the way how I express, and that's what makes it Mexican because that's like really, like they know I'm me like someone Hispanic knows I am Mexican just by the way I express myself. Okay. What about, you know, like in your family home? Because both of your parents are Guatemalan. Yeah. So the the culture that they brought into the house, I'm, I'm assuming like, I, obviously uh, everyone says, oh, like Latin America, but each and every country, they're so different to each other, right? So Mexico and Guatemala are going to be very different, like culture wise, habit wise, maybe not very, very different, but there are probably some distinct differences. Um so did they kind of bring that into like your family house when and it was it like very prominent that like it was like a Guatemalan household or did they just kind of integrate with the the Mexican I guess society and community I think it's a mixture uh, in festive days you actually see like the Guatemalan culture coming up okay in the overall day it just becomes uh, like speaking maybe they like have a little bit of, of an accent but just like one percent and the rest is just mexican like they mm -hmm. have already like adapted to like we have been there how, how old they have been there like more than 20 years now okay so they lost like a lot of things and they picked up a lot of things from mexico so yeah like for them now that they for example if they crave food they crave mexican food like tacos which Same. is the uh -huh. <laughs> instead of like something from Guatemala maybe okay. just when it's festive they bring like Guatemalan food like to okay. cook if we do have time I would love to talk about uh the day of the dead uh which is coming up right oh yeah yeah we can talk about that like yeah it's, it's not that well I don't know yeah, this is where the fake Mexican part I think it will come up okay. because I don't think I'm really involved in that I know like the basic stuff that I should know so what you don't celebrate it like no. first of all tell us tell us how you celebrate it because I personally don't know I think it's kind of like a party kind of kind of thing and great makeup absolutely great <laughs> I think the day of the dead is not really popular in Mexico it is in some places in some individual places where they actually celebrate it it's like everyone thinks that we celebrate Cinco de Mayo yeah. Which they think that is like our Independence Day, which it isn't. And the only place that they that celebrate. Might be one of the quiz questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
one of the only uh, places that celebrates Cinco de Mayo is, um, I think it's in Puebla, but it's yeah. not in the whole country. It's just in that place because I think the Cinco de Mayo is when they won a battle against France, the cake war. Don't take my the word for it. War. Yeah, cake war. See, in Europe, we like to make things dramatic with, you know, World War One, World War Two. We like to be like, yeah, this is massive. And then in Mexico. <laughs> it was the first master chef. <laughs> <laughs> and we won it. <laughs> it's like the cake war. It's like, what the? <laughs> Gordon Ramsay like, can go. <laughs> you know, like, give it a little bit of oomph. I don't know. This is, this is not intimidating. It literally sounds, you know, like two toddlers going at it in their kitchen. And they lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they won that war because Napoleon was uh, being attacked in another place. Ah, so he, he was distracted. He put, yeah, kind of thing. He was and being we just hit like, up on a different front. That's how you win stuff now, yeah. nowadays. <laughs> just, you just go <laughs> take just like, advantage. You know, like, their atten- like, he was a short man. I, I reckon his attention span was really short as well. So he just couldn't focus on all of those things. He was like, fuck it. You know, like, let's give it up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Cinco de Mayo, that was... That that's the word, but Day of the Dead. Um, yeah, it's not. I think we celebrate more Halloween, but it's because we are near the U.S. I think Is we have like adopted more of a, a lot like a of commercial the commercial celebration yeah. at this point. Yeah. So how how traditionally what it would, can be traditional like it's, you put an altar and there's like a really cool few stories out of it. Like if you if you've seen Coco, like I think oh, that's I one Coco. of the the few mo- like not few like. like that movie really portray, portrays really well like the whole a spiritual part of Day of the Dead of Mexico in a really traditional way. Mm-hmm. But I think like that importance has been lost like they're portrayed in Coco. It's not like everyone does it. It's done in like in a white, like it's done, but it's not like every house has their own altar. They usually put altars. You have like the food, which the, if you made an altar for, I don't know, uh, for your dad or grandpa that likes I don't know tequila let's make it in English like fish and chips <laughs> you got uh, an ro- altar with fish and chips the, on the it. Sunday roast and everything you put it on the altar just like to attract like the smells and everything should attract uh, the, sp- the spirit the spirits of so the if you put tequila the, the spirit it attracts the spirit yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Let's finish this episode. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and you put something, some flowers called Sempasuchil, which will allow them to like okay. follow the path. I think that's how they also portray in Coco. And also the mirror. It's for the uh, for the guy, the person that is dead, to see himself uh, in the mirror. What else do they put? I think that's it. I may be wrong in some details. And, and maybe I oversimplified a couple of things, but that's like the general okay. view out of it. Is it on the 2nd of November, Dia de so, los Muertos? I'm pretty sure the first one is for the adults and the second is for the kids. Oh, oh I they didn't know like there was a, a split. One. I thought it was the, like the... I think it is. I, I At least that's how I remember they told me. Also, there was like this story, like like this theory... Like of course, I think it's not true, and I have not tried it. I w- and I will not try it. Like if you, if you put the, you know, like the goop of your eye, yeah. how do you call it? Like I if you put your dog's goop into <laughs> yours, you would be able to see the death coming to the altar. Oh yeah, it's a lie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I haven't tried it. <laughs> How many people actually have tried it? And Probably a couple, for sure. Yeah, yeah. but that's like, a, <laughs> not theory, but just, just know, like those legends. There's a whole story behind it. I completely skipped the whole story, but I just remembered like, that There's one so much thing. going into it. It's like we ended on a goop. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. think it was because the, the, you know, when the dog starts to bark, mm. like on the day of the day, usually like the dogs will bark and they don't know Ooh. to who. And until you put... There was a dog in Coco. The, exactly. If you put... And, and the dog can see the death. Yeah. Without anything else. That's where it comes from. Shit. Nice. I really do like that movie. It's a yeah. beautifully made movie. I, we should probably rewatch it on yeah. Halloween or like... Yeah. Yeah. De los Muertos. I don't care. Um, <laughs> but it's... Yeah. To whoever 
Like, if anyone have, hasn't seen it already, it's great. Yeah, good recommendation. And it's they pro- portrayed really well. Yeah, and uh, it's probably more informative than Kenneth over here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> right, but th- because it all comes down to uh, whether you are truly a Mexican. So Let's let me, see. Let me pull out my laptop, uh, and obviously the uh, the technical difficulties can be removed in post. <laughs> If I don't know an answer, I'll just start to sing the Mexican uh, national anthem. <laughs> Do you know it? All of it? Kind, no, not all. Oh my God. That's so <laughs> Important bits. Um, right. So I will have to read the answers to you, I think. So please forgive my pronunciation of the Spanish words. All okay. right. Uh, I don't know if any of the questions are like very basic, like, oh, have you ever been hit with a chancla? Because I, yeah, that's just. That's very stereotypical and probably not true. I have. Oh, you have? <laughs> for, every, for anyone wondering. <laughs> right. Uh, question number one, then. Let's get into it. Um, who is the current president of Mexico? And I guess we can do it two ways. I can read you all the answers, or you can tell me the answer now and you'll get an extra point. Let's the. I think let's get the... Listeners involved oh, okay. say the okay. the answers, okay. and right. they can guess, and then I'll guess. Okay, so uh, it's um, Vincente Fox, Felipe <laughs> Calderon, mm-hmm. Enrique Nieto. Yeah, Enrique Peña Nieto. Oh, the, the Nieto. middle, the middle yeah, one is me. I swear. <laughs> oh my God, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. <laughs> so my answer is. El Peje, Andrés Manuel López Obrador. Oh my God, this is a very like a very Latin name as well. Uh, it doesn't show me the correct answer, by the way. Um, it will just show you the overall percentage of how Mexican you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. What is the truth behind Cinco de Mayo? Um, it is a celebration in defe- defeating U.S. forces. Uh, option B: Mexican Independence Day. C, uh, Mexican military victory in defeating the larger French forces at the Battle of Puebla. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I wonder. (laughs) And D, Mexican victory in defeating British army occupied forces. C. Okay. I cannot say the whole thing. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, this is a picture, this is a picture round. Um, So I'm going to, I'm just going to pass you the laptop. It's a, it's a picture of a very latin looking man asking who that is <laughs> okay uh, 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 kenneth is gonna put okay. the picture on i'll describe the guy <laughs> he makes a lot of drugs or he used to oh from mexico oh uh, yeah i uh, didn't know that everyone knows him <laughs> damn i was like who is that <laughs> um okay <clears throat> Your musical preference. Oh, uh, my answer for that oh. question is El Chapo Guzman. Oh, okay. Nice. Yes. <laughs> uh, your musical preference. I feel like I'm going like in and out of sound all the time. So, oh, well. <laughs> Fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first one. Banda, Tejano, Luis Miguel, <laughs> Beyonce. Music what? Uh, your musical preference. I think there's just like, uh, yeah. Banda, Tejano, Luis Miguel. Uh, Beyonce, uh, corridos, rap slash hip hop, none of the above. Luis Miguel. Of course, you were going to choose. Luis yeah. Miguel. Your Christmas dinner. Uh, option A, tamales. Option B, ham. Option C, roast. And option D, birria. B- birria or borrego. Oh, none of the above. There is no answer like that. <laughs> You've made tamales before. You it has to be tamales. Oh yeah, but not my favorite food. I think. Like I, I, like gu- I guess it's like culturally, like you need oh, to. Oh, I'll choose to- tamales just because I need to be the non-fake Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> you will be the fake Mexican no matter what, no matter what the percentage is. Um, right. What is uh, molca molcajete? Mm-hmm. Okay. The first option is a plate, mug, stove, refrigerator, or stone tool. Okay, so it's a stone tool. It's where you usually, where they traditionally make like avocado, like smashed, like the guacamole. Oh, 
were or that's where you crush for like different um, spices right spices make sauces in there it's really traditional oh okay do you have yeah. that in your house yeah i think my, my mom does oh, okay I, yeah. I i i saw all of those like in like i don't know cooking shows and stuff but i never actually owned them because everyone just buys their spices with like a pre-made grinder <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah probably it's like you know like when you buy those vintage stuff like a vinyl kind of thing i think it's kind of the same okay yeah okay makes sense uh, i think well this is not really a question um it just says ¿Qué estás haciendo? <laughs> what am i doing um and it's well the, the options are uh, or did i just oh no i didn't uh, the options are what's your name how are you what are you doing i have no idea uh, where are you going? So I guess you just need to translate it and that's going to tell them if you're a real Mexican. <laughs> ¿Qué estás haciendo? I don't under... Skip you, question. No, <laughs> <laughs> you just need to translate it into English. ¿Qué estás oh, haciendo? Oh, what are you doing? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, how how would a non-Mexican, like... A like, fake Mexican. Nah, that's why we're <laughs> taking this test. Imagine <laughs> someone actually trying to prove that another one is like, oh, someone faking that is actually Mexican and doesn't speak any Spanish. Ooh, how can you Shit. fake that though? Like being Mexican and not speaking any Spanish. Uh, I think you can. Like there's there's like a third generation or fourth generation maybe oh, in the okay. US that uh, they say they're Mexican because of their family because their family is mexican but they don't really speak spanish okay but i wouldn't call them fake mexicans but yeah i'm not gonna say anything (laughs) (laughs) right uh jenny rivera died in december 2012 what was her nickname uh queen of tejano diva de la banda la reina de, de la banda la reina de la pacifica i think i don't really know la reina de la banda the queen of the band I don't know. They they actually don't show the answer, so I don't okay, know what you... Okay, let's see how. Okay, th- this is another one of those picture ones. Uh, so it says, who is this? And it's Grupo Montero, uh, la, la original banda El Limón. Oh my God, this 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 word is very difficult. I'm I'll, gonna tr- have, I'll, I'll try I'm, to say I'm, it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Kenny say so it. So in the picture, usually, uh, the picture shows like a lot of men. <laughs> a lot of laughing. Hugging each other. <laughs> It's an orgy. <laughs> <laughs> All dressed the same. So they're asking which band is this? Grupo Montero, la original banda El Limón, la arrolladora banda El Limón, yeah, banda El Recodo. Um, Do you know? I think no. Because Ooh. usually these bands... Like all of these bands has have a lot of people. I will not remember the Good, good. This is supposed to be a challenging one. But I think it's this one. Okay. Which one did you... La Arrolladora Banda Limón. Okay. So the really difficult one. Your favorite telenovela. <laughs> or novela. Eh, que bonita amor. Mm. Por, si- por siempre mi amor. Como dice el dicho. <laughs> Omorcito corazón. Mm-hmm. I don't watch novelas. What's a novela? <laughs> eh, no. I think como dice el dicho. Like... What is it about? That, that show, yeah. It's really... It's really sad. <laughs> like, you know, what? it's like one of those things that you watch and they show you this problem and they over escalate it and they just end in something really uh, tragic. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I thought, you know, like, like novellas the same are usually... kind of thing. That's the translation oh. of the thing. Like, you know, when someone tells you, you're saying, like, don't do this because da 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 da. Yeah. Because, and usually they try to, it's like proving what the say says. Right. Okay. That's so. I usually thought, you know, like there are supposed to be a little bit more like lighthearted, I guess. Kind of. But Not. tragic. Okay. You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so polar opposites then. <laughs> right. Which movie is a must in your collection? Uh, Blood in, Blood out, Titanic, Selena, None, <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean. And all of Pirates of the Caribbean or just let's say the first one because it was a cinematic masterpiece and is it due to Johnny Depp being incredibly hot maybe but Agreed. we're we're rolling <laughs> <laughs> we're rolling with it yeah if anyone says place. Orlando Bloom was more handsome than Johnny Depp in the first movie just abs- in the movie itself yeah no would you 
Do you, do you think like Johnny Depp on the movie as Captain Jack Sparrow <laughs> like, was hotter than Orlando Bloom? In my opinion, as, yeah. What is it, Jack Turner? No. Um, Jack Turner. I just, w- William Turner. William Turner. William Turner. Really? Yeah. I was, I like jo- Johnny Depp in that movie was my first like big crush. When I was like, what, like 12, 13, I was absolutely obsessed Shit. with him. Yeah. <laughs> little TMI there, but heck, uh, which movie is a must in your collection? Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Nice. Okay, um, you're hungry. Where do you where do you go to eat? Um, local taqueria, uh, mm-hmm. Jack in the Box, teriyaki, grab a sandwich. Oh, the tacos for sure. Local ta- uh, taqueria that- is like tacos from local places where okay. usually they have like little carts and they sell tacos for it's like nice. no money whatsoever. Like, like not it, for free, but yeah, really well, cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like in com- like in comparison to like the UK prices. Oh yeah, no, hundred like, percent. How many tacos can you get for a pound? For a pound. Yeah. Back when I was, like, one taco must be. Wait, making the conversion. Point <laughs> thirty p, just one taco, S- small taco. Like Point thirty. So taco. you so you can get around three tacos. Yeah. For a pound. And here for three tacos is almost ten pounds. That is insane. It's crazy. Yeah. Jesus, we all need to go to Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> How many bailes have you been to? How many? Bailes. I think. Bailes. Okay. Yeah, I think it's about dances. <laughs> yeah. Um, too many to count. One or two, at least five, none. <laughs> Bailes, none in Mexico. I think I haven't been like to a proper really. <gasps> oh, this is like, gonna lower your score, huh? A lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, your dessert choice: tres leches, flan, vanilla cake, strawberry cheesecake, pan dulce or dulce. I don't know how you say it. And apple pie. What was the third option? Vanilla cake. Please don't go for vanilla cake. Is that I don't like three, uh, tres, tres leches. leches, three milks. You don't Weird like it. I don't like it. <gasps> flan. Like Mexican. A flan. A flan. Okay. By the way, the picture, I don't know if you're going to put them on uh, on a screen at some point. The picture of flan does not look nice. It's not really nice. Oh, so why are you choosing it? <laughs> because Just because the other it's Latino. doesn't sound really nice. <laughs> okay. Apple pie sounds great. Oh my god, this is this is too easy. So what comes what comes to mind when you see this picture and it's a picture of a cat and there are two options, cat or gato. <laughs> gato. <laughs> no, I'm just going to put gato. Uh, okay, it was actually very difficult to find, you know, a test that actually has more difficult questions other than have you ever been hit with a chancla? Mm. I swear, like all of the stereotypes are like, what What do you eat? Or you just eat tacos for every single meal. Like at least this one had like a do couple you transporting of- donkey. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> it's just like the stereotypes are insane. Um, so yeah, I d- obviously this test is not to offend any of the <laughs> any of the Latin Americans. Um, or this is while Sasha is showing me her finger and yeah. saying "fuck Mexico." <laughs> Her words, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> Cancel her. Um, yeah, but just, I don't want to offend anyone. That was the only quiz that I could actually find that wasn't. Is that the results? Did I finish? No, 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 oh. no, no, no. Um, what do you consider yourself? Uh, Chicano, Mexican, Latino, Hispanic, white, or other? Latino. Okay. Um, who is Mexican? And the options are Mario Lopez, Esai Morales. Rosalind Sanchez, Luis Fonsi. What was the second option? Esai Morales. And the third? Ro- Rosalind Sanchez. I can show you the, the photos if those are going to help. The second one. Okay. You sure? Yeah. I think Mario Lopez is... No. Mario Lopez, I think, is from the US. Okay. Well, I'm selecting that answer. Um, your dance preference. See, this is where I, where I knew I would get you. It's, uh, cumbia, salsa, bachata, hip hop. Oh, this is a difficult word. Uh, Duranguese. Duranguense. Guense. Tacita Duranguense. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, corridos. Uh, cumbias, 100%. Ah, but, well. Listen to more cumbias. <laughs> everyone, saw, everyone saw that coming. <laughs> right. Uh, who did Los Tucanes de... Tijuana play homage to in a song 
eh, Sandra Avia Beltrán, uh-huh. eh, Selena, Jenny Rivera, eh, Ana Gabriel. Oh, shit. I thought it was going to be like Johnny Cash or something. <laughs> What were the options well, again? It's, about, it's, it's Sandra Avila Beltrán, Selena, Jenny Rivera, Ana Gabriel. Jenny Rivera. Okay, if you, if you say so. Okay, very last question. What is Pico de Gallo? Uh, Pico de Gallo. Uh, and I think uh, you, you do need to select a, select a photo. Sorry for the, the three questions that had photos in them. Yeah, so... yeah. I chose the, sal- the, the first I'll salad. The Am I wrong? The one that is red? Yeah. Yeah, that's the Pico de Gallo. What is that? A tomato. Oh my God, you saw your score. <laughs> Did you? No. <laughs> How much? Fuck. That is such BS. It says 100% Mexican. Uh, <laughs> now no one can say that I'm a fake Mexican. <laughs> This is a legit test. He will be getting a certificate. Yeah. Hey, Bella. Hi. Um, do you want me to read the little description or are you just fine with being 100% Mexican? What's the description? You love everything about your Mexican heritage. You attend every baile in town, which is clearly not true. When I said I attended <laughs> yeah, none. none. <laughs> <laughs> And love to wear your cowboy boots. Cowboy boots? <laughs> yeah. Um, you rush home to watch your favorite novela while enjoying your home-cooked carne asada and chile re- rellenos. Oh, I really like chile. Oh. <laughs> you prefer flan to the typical store-bought chocolate cake and love the taste of horchata? Horchata, yeah. My brother loves horchata. What is that? It's like milk, coconut, uh, cinnamon. It's really nice. Okay. Never had that. Uh, there are coronas stored in your fridge and no party is complete without the sound of corridos. Uh, I don't like corona. <laughs> and I don't listen to a lot of corridos. <laughs> This test is a scam. Like literally I Give chose us our money back. all the other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so bad um <laughs> and your favorite banda blasting through the roof you get angry when they play salsa music in a mexican restaurant and you are fluent in spanish well duh uh you are an avid supporter of immigration ref- re- reform and only go to taco oh, shit. now he's getting political yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this took a turn real quick this was a, this is a massive 180 <laughs> and only go to taco bell when you don't feel like cooking Uh, you have pictures of Holy Vir- the, the Holy Virgin on your wall and take your Catholic faith serious. <laughs> so it didn't go away from religion. Honestly, This I'm episode sorry, has been religious as fuck. <laughs> right? But when I'm, you know, like when I'm actually reading it, like you are the opposite of everything I'm reading out. Yeah. <laughs> You're not even Catholic. <laughs> uh, no I do meal- like my cowboy boots though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it. Like your, uh, your, your Halloween costume, is, it has to be a cowboy now. Um, you have, uh, yeah, yeah. No meal is complete without some uh, ta- tapatio sauce? Tabasco. It tapatio. Tapatio, yeah. I don't know what's tapatio sauce. Exactly. Shit, this <laughs> um, is really weird. Uh-huh. You aren't afraid to blast uh, Jefe de Jefes or El Paisano by Los Tigers. I've heard of Paisa. I don't really like uh, Los Tigres del Norte. <laughs> I watched the so I watched a documentary where they went to like play uh, make a live concert to a prison cell, right? Like a prison, not a prison cell, <laughs> like a prison. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they played a few of their songs, and I uh, I didn't really vibe with their music. They get- they aim more for like immigrants going from Mexico to the U.S. Though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. And then it finishes with, you are not ashamed, you are 100% Mexican. I am not And ashamed. I think we should just have a moment of silence for how bullshit this test was. <laughs> <laughs> That is not true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, um, if you want me to email you the results, I will. <laughs> And um, yeah, you're 100% Mexican. Do you want, do you want, do you want to tell your parents? <laughs> Of course, okay. I feel really proud. I want to take this moment to thank my parents, to thank my country, my presidents for fucking up the country. No, I'm oh kidding. Oh my god, <laughs> this is where it gets political. <laughs> yeah, but that was my little um, yeah interruption, I guess. Shut. Was good though. Was good. Now I know that I'm Mexican, 100%. <laughs> It's like you know when there was like this whole uh, debacle about 
Obama, whether he's actually American and people are yeah. like, show us the birth certificate. You can now be like, oh, are you Mexican? And you can just put the put the results of this uh, playbuzz.com quiz nice. <laughs> as a legitimate. I think proof. they keep the, that test for nationality. Yeah, they probably do. <laughs> it's like, how many bailas have you been to? <laughs> if you've been to none, you cannot be Mexican can, legally. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's get back to the questions. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've been in the UK for a while now, like yeah. for two or three years, more. Uh, four, uh, it's my year now. it's my fourth year yeah, now. So yeah. Um, and now, like, I think this is more like my perspective of my my last year. Okay. Might get like a bit more personal kind of thing. How did you like move? Like, how did you feel the last year of uni? like in the uk the thing is you did a master's too so yeah i, I, how, I only did my master's here you got into uni i think you are pretty involved in uni um i i wouldn't say i was too involved to be fair i think i was more in involved in suvc mm -hmm. um but that was mostly because um when i first came that's where my entire friend friend group kind of was created um so i automatically got really um yeah in, engaged in in all of those activities um with my master's it was it was a good course uh, so i did masters of public health with a minor in management and leadership and it was a good course but it was not objectively or subjectively subject su uh, subjectively Thank you no. very much. I can't speak English anymore. Uh, we, can, we can fix it in post. <laughs> um, subjectively, it was way easier than my the course that I did back home. So my undergrad, my undergrad was very practical. I did uh, management and finance and healthcare. And, you know, I did uh, accounting. I did the financial bits. I did like actual management exercises. So I was like very hands on. Like by the time that I finished my undergrad I could literally go and work in a hospital and I knew how to do all the costings I do I knew how to do all the, the balance sheets like I, I was really prepared and mm -hmm. then I came for my master's and it was very theoretical so it was a lot of reading a lot of discussions and not much of actual a lot of discussions of what should be done but not not a lot of actions and mm -hmm. it frustrated me a little bit so I wasn't as engaged in that area I guess, of my UK experience, like uni experience. So I just kind of threw myself into the society, um, the society side, which I didn't really have back home in Poland. I um, like we, we had like post like or like extracurricular activities, let's say. But I think the society culture here in the UK is massive. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the amount of of the, the sheer number of the societies that uni of has which is like what 250 or something uh, that just shows that like people really want to get that sense of community and that's exactly what happened for me like i joined volleyball and it, it just became uh yeah the thing that really consumed the majority of my time i think um it was a, it was a good year for me like i uh, i enjoyed it i met met a lot of great people uh, like Nadia <laughs> shout out to Nadia <laughs> my best friend and you know like I, I met pretty much everyone that I know now like my closest friend friend group is like was created through volleyball uh, but at the same time you know like I had my first panic attack mm -hmm. when uh, when I came here for my master's and again it was a little bit it was a little bit ironic because my course back home was harder than the one that I did here and yet the stress and the pressure that I felt here for my master's was just too much for me to handle so like during my first exam season here in the UK uh well I think I was back back home for Christmas break but I had I had my first ever panic attack and I I owe it all to University of Sheffield <laughs> <laughs> I paid 10k for this for this panic attack right yeah I hate exams in here like they put too much pressure in just a yeah. two hour span like where you need to remember everything you know absolutely and it's it's not really divided throughout the the semester either yeah. you know like you get like 50% here 20% here 30% here it just like at least from the majority of my uh, modules it was just like you know like a 100% exam or a 100% presentation or it, there was a bunch of essays I think for 
like I had more or less eight to nine modules or maybe maybe I'm exaggerating let's say seven or eight modules each semester and at least half of them were just essays for like three thousand words so I, I would end up you know like basically writing uh, enough words worth of a dissertation during one exam season yeah which is yeah it's ridiculous so it was a very stressful experience I'm really glad that I came to the UK though I think um and I was really lucky with you know like the Brexit and everything that I managed to do it before Brexit and I still got to oh because you have the two like the residence status or yeah I'm pre-settled pre right now yeah yeah, yeah. and so, the European passport yeah I have I have the European yeah. passport so I'm, I'm gonna like I can uh I you know I could come into the country with no problem I can live here and uh I can now work here uh with with no issues and and I still managed to get my loan uh, thank you, Queen, El Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> My mom keeps telling everyone back home, by the way, that uh, I am on a private scholarship uh, given by Queen, Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone in my hometown believes I am a very special child when it's actually, you know, pretty much everyone <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the UK who gets that. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't don't break that, um, you know, dream for me. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, I was quite lucky. So I, I did really enjoy my experience, but... Um, yeah, I, I I got to see a different part of uni culture, which I, I appreciate. Yeah. What about you? Because I, I know you did your, like a, the first year you did in Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, you moved, uh, well, you switched courses and you, you came to Sheffield. But are you like, because you said like with your fourth year, you're feeling it a bit different. It is a bit different, but not because of the UK. I think like the UK it's been like really good like i would stay here even after the fourth year is more like a type of everyone i i think i felt like at some point like kind of like safe not i don't i don't know if that's the word but you know everyone else was living everyone else was trying something new and i was staying here and yeah. i was like oh i already know i have one year in here and i already know uh what's happening i know where i'm going to hang out i know what i'm going to do like i thought it was going to be more peaceful kind of thing but since everyone left it was also like some kind of like new beginning in sheffield yeah to because a, a degree. lot of people have left and the dynamic definitely changed it changed a lot like even with i think with sgbc because I, uh, the volleyball club i felt really identified to like to plan around that but now it just feels like my time is up, you know, like, Ooh, really? yeah, like, I think I, I know this is like the last year and I know like when you see, uh, it's a weird feeling because now you start to feel like not old. <laughs> it's like how an update will feel in like life kind of thing. Like, you know, you already had your thing. But now a new update is coming now kind of thing. You know, like I don't identify myself a lot with SUVC at all. Like even when I have conversations with people with the fresher and everything, it just feels that they're like in a different frequency kind of thing. Because they are, you know, like I, I always say that, that, you know, like those are the formative years. Like mm -hmm. when you're coming to uni, like this is when you're actually becoming the person that you're going to become. Um, so if you if you take us, you know, uh, two people both 24 almost no uh, she's older both, <laughs> both, are, both are 24 um and um yeah so if you take two people right uh we're 24 or almost 24 and then you look at the freshers who are coming in right 19 or 20 um and if you look back to the person you were when you were 19 or 20 there's a massive difference and fair enough it might be the same you know like if if we look back when we're like 20, 28, 29, but I think personally, I changed so much throughout those years. So it's only understandable that there is quite a big gap. That's not to say, you know, like they're not nice people that you can't have a conversation with them, that you can't be friends with them, but you have to recognize they're on, at a completely different stage in their life. Yeah. Cause you're probably, you know, starting to think about, because um, you're doing like your integrated masters now right mm -hmm. so you either have to think about whether you want to do a phd or if you're completely ruling it out then you know it's time to look for a job and that is like the next big step for them they have three to four more years 
to just figure it out, enjoy their life. And you're yeah. at the end of that, which is a very stressful time. It is. And also like the conversations I have with them, like, like you said, it's not that they are not nice or anything. It's just different, like different type of, uh, how do you say, like things I like sometimes. Yeah. And things they like, I don't think I have found that like sweet spot to be like, let's have this conversation. Yeah. Apart from volleyball, of course, like when we speak volleyball between each other, volleyball is like... It's the common ground for exactly. everyone. Yeah. But apart from that, I don't find a lot of common ground in it. Like, I think I start to feel like a little bit more, you know, when someone doesn't understand, you know, like oh your gosh. grandpa looking at the phone and you're like, uh, what if you click yeah. like this and when do you click on that? I Dude, feel it, we're not, only not, 24. Not to, not to that extent, of course. He's putting like metaphorically, yeah, like yeah, 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 over exaggerated. Yeah. But I'm just like, when they speak to me in some things like... Uh, one thing I've heard like a lot growing up, like not growing up, like recently, like anime has become more like a general culture thing. Oh, yeah. Like everyone now knows about anime. When I was growing up, that was not a huge thing. Like anime okay. was not something, you know. And most of the conversations I have like with the new people from volleyball is surrounded by anime. Like anime has become this one genre that everyone must see like at least one time in their okay. life. And Are you into it. anime? I've seen a couple. They're good. Like what Jose and uh, even Ron has showed me that they're good. Yeah. But I don't, I don't watch it with my own, like. Uh, On your own accord. Exactly. Yeah. Like I, I don't go and be I, like, I want to watch this. I, I'm very similar. Although I, I watched a couple that I really, really enjoyed, like Death Note being one of them. And I, I thought, I mean, obviously it's probably, you know, the opinion of someone who's only seen like five tops and mm -hmm. it's probably very basic but i i did watch it because like like no one prompted me i just watched it on my own and i thought it was absolutely great but then again it's been years since i watched it and like i'm not that tempted to watch that genre although i appreciate like how much goes into it as yeah. as a whole um as a whole production but yeah like for you know like i think <laughs> it's voluble uh, anime and tiktok <laughs> is kind of something that like the freshers let's say or like the new people that are around us so like the new people around the volleyball club um this is where they oh, pardon me um uh, like this is like what they the, the three main things i would like i would pinpoint like they all connect them to yeah. a way right and yeah it, it, that's not the case for us and it's only three years of like three or four years of a difference right between us and them so it's kind of it's crazy to think that you know it's it, it's a, such a small amount of time and yet we're such different people i was listening like from the president from musical music culture society like how he's explained how they are trying these new approaches to like get into freshers like to attract like more people into the society because facebook for them Right now is something yeah. obsolete. Like a lot of the new people don't have Facebook at all. They don't yeah. use it. They just like delete it and everything. So they 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 got now like WhatsApp for those groups. So I guess like for me, Facebook is something like I thought it was for like everyone must have yeah. a profile at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but I think right now it's becoming like this thing like people don't want to use. It always it always surprises me though. Like so like how do you? I know like you can request uh to like or, or like you can follow someone on insta or request someone on insta or whatever uh but like i don't know for me it's the first step has always been yeah let's like add them as a friend on facebook yeah. right and then i don't know i know it's different in a lot of cultures i know you've told me before that in latin america whatsapp is much bigger than yeah. any other like form of communication so like in europe and i think that's for the majority of european countries it's messenger so I personally don't use Facebook anymore. I try to, you know, like stay off it completely. Um, I just look at people's birthdays. I think this is the most useful <laughs> feature Facebook has. Yeah, that I can, Yeah, I can just check when people's birthdays are and that's it. Um, and then I just use Messenger. And But then like I, I barely ever speak to people on Instagram or god forbid snapchat i'm mm -hmm. sorry when did snapchat make a comeback I know. this is something that like confuses me so much i think it's with i think it's very popular like now with the uk and the us that like 
Snapchat is like the place where you chat. Like, do you use the the, the chat option on Snapchat? I have never, like, I haven't used it in ages. I know. Ages. And this really shows our age, dude. Shit. So everyone is like sharing their friendships through Snapchat. Yeah. We're very old school. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine having a face-to-face conversation? Shit, I didn't Cannot know. relate. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh yeah, but how did we go? Oh, like that you're feeling a little bit more like out of place in your fourth year. Yeah, I think it's the first time that I was like, yeah, like this is, this is the end. As dramatic as it sounds. But like, I don't know if my example is the best to put here but you know like I was thinking the same oh my god you know like I'm finishing my master's everything is going to change and um you know I'm still here in Sheffield which is not an ideal situation but uh, I'm still here in Sheffield um and you know like I continued to have like let's say like a snippet of my life from uni Mm -hmm. uh and like the new beginning that I have so I I have like a full-time job now Uh, But I still have my friendship group. I still attend, you know, like the volleyball events as much as I can or want to. Um, Which is, let's say, like the best of both worlds for now. But I think that will come to an end at some point and it will be very strange. Yeah, of course. Like I, I like you're saying, like, I think as we start to get out of like uni life, like the new like people that are coming to uni will start like we said like we start we we stop being part of the uni like yeah a group so like i know like in even if i stay in sheffield like in one two years i'll just lose the connection with volleyball i think because right right now as it sounds have you seen too hot to handle yes yeah so you know this this will sound like a lana <laughs> like, no, I don't feel a real connection. <laughs> you know we when love you, reality TV. <laughs> you know when you talk with someone and it just flows like yeah. every time you speak to someone like with that person and it just flows and flows and flows. I still haven't, I, you know, like the conversations I've had. Sometimes I feel it's like really bumpy. Oh yeah, or like. It's, but it can change. I'm not saying like it, it's their fault but it's also like mine like I, I i haven't found like the common ground that you're saying yeah but <clears throat> it is a little bit harder to find that common ground because uh, there are like general generational differences and i know like i don't necessarily agree with you know like putting those labels of like oh someone's a millennial someone is mm-hmm. a gen z or whatever and you know like oh if you wear skinny jeans you're a millennial or if you wear um uh, or if you wear, uh, you know, baggy jeans, you're Gen Z. And it's like, well, no, <laughs> that's not necessarily the truth. The truth, But um, there are, you know, like differences in how we approach life or like people a little bit older than us approach life and, and how they do it. And I think it's a, it's like very positive in, um, in the grand scheme of things because um, Gen Z is kind of thought to be, you know, like that generation to really change kind of like in, again a very general view but like to change society so like mm-hmm. those are the people who are going to fight for equality those are the people who are going to fight for human rights you know like those are the the people who are going to make the real change that all of us talked about or like brought light to um so i think they do deserve the credit but like we still need to recognize that we're not we're not at the same like there is, there are differences. Pardon me, my parents are calling me. <laughs> um, yeah, there are differences in how we how we view the world, and sometimes it's very difficult to get past these. Yeah, of course. But wouldn't you say, like, for older generations, like you know, you have like the really like you know conservative, uh, explain, conservative yeah. uh, type of. The mindsets yeah when well hopefully like, we're not that <laughs> hopefully but that, like you said you never know you, you always think you're the, the hero of the of your story yeah exactly <laughs> that's and what then, i mean you know like we might think we're like we're so progressive and so liberal right now but you know in 20 years if we keep the views that we have at this point so it, again like let's say oh like we're very liberal but we don't know what the the overall views are like what the the movements are going to be in 20 years. So actually maybe in 20 years we will be like the, 
the yeah the conservatives because yeah. we don't know what's going to happen we don't know what's going to be bad i think that's like the key point like uh, for example if in 10 years meat is forbidden for us to yeah. eat we will be like oh but i have eaten meat for 20 years yeah and that change might be like a bit awkward for us and we will like try to stick to our own values because we grew up like that i'm not saying like we should yeah but that's that, but sometimes that's, it's difficult that's such a good example yeah because um yeah it might be you know like an ethical thing at that point you know that people will not eat meat or you know an environmental issue as well um and then but in in our heads it's going to be like oh but we've done it our entire life and it's you know like they some people might say the same thing for like i don't know equality and like equal pay right like you know my grandpa in the 60s he was probably getting paid more than um uh yeah he was probably getting paid more than his like female co-workers but mm -hmm. you know for his for him it's normal because that's how it was his entire life and it's like and it's who, am, who am i to tell this 86 year old man that he's wrong just leave my granddad alone at this point you know he really deserves his peace <laughs> yeah it's really circumstantial like uh, i think we were talking with alex about the whole uh people sometimes are brought out And it's not the fact that he wants to be bad or she wants to be bad or the person wants to be bad. It's just the circumstances that brought him to take those actions. Yeah. So, like, we are, uh, how do you say it? Like, we are, we are brought up and the circumstances are the ones that made us. And sometimes, yeah. like, those we type of changes. We are the product of our circumstances or something exactly. or our environment. Like, we Absolutely. didn't choose to be a, to i don't know for x to be no for i don't know tell me like one food uh i know for example chicken nuggets like actual chicken nuggets <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna are, go from cheaper, existential crisis to chicken nuggets <laughs> are cheaper than uh, corn like you know like oh, the yeah. vegan nuggets and like right now for us to pay like uh, for them as a student is quite hard Because you don't get the same amount for the same price. And yeah. you actually need to meet your health uh, consumption or whatever. It's actually a, a major topic in like public health as well. That um, junk food is more accessible and cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, so people um, who do not have as many resources or are not as educated, they go for junk food. And... Um, you know, like people who are like, let's say, quote unquote, richer or... Uh, again quote unquote smarter like they tend to go for veggies and fruits and stuff like that and that is a, a major like social inequality that happens mm -hmm. within like public health as well because some people just don't have access to these options like going to waitrose to get you know like fresh fresh veggies and fresh fruit because it's going to be like a 30 pound or a 40 pound shop and they don't have they don't have the money for it I do think like sometimes eating like pure plant-based things might be a bit cheaper just sometimes i don't really know like but i've seen like my expenses usually in the shop when i just buy like uh, something that is not meat is yeah. cheaper which i agree but i think what uh, what you were saying like usually people that don't have the money like go to junk food is not only the fact that they decide to go because it's cheaper but also like the amount of hours they work they yes. they are not allowed to actually cook that fresh food that is supposed to be cooked so like, that's what you were saying like they go for the young food and it actually makes it you do it because you have to because it's yeah. a necessity not because you choose to and then you end up with like you know like more health problems that prevent you from work and then if you can't work you don't have money and if you don't have money you're gonna again go for the cheaper options which is not as nutritious and so on so on it's it's honestly a vicious cycle yeah. um but yeah like that you know edges towards uh you know like a, a bigger you know like what is our society doing <laughs> D debate and that yeah i don't know if we want to get into that <laughs> yeah <laughs> because it's you know like it's it's a massive issue you know like between um you know how how poor people or like yeah social let's say social inequalities like how mm -hmm. they are being tackled in our society and the truth is that oh well the truth subjective opinion is that i don't think they are because people who are supposed to make those laws against those social inequalities are actually The, the yeah the people who don't have like the, they don't experience them so mm -hmm. they're you know like they're educated uh they're rich 
so they just they see it from like their outside perspective like they're completely disconnected from it and then they say oh like we're gonna change this one law we're gonna make yeah let's say corn like 50 50 50p cheaper and it's like oh yeah solved it (laughs) done (laughs) yeah i guess it's finding the root of the problem and actually trying to make something and also like the motivation for them to actually do something well that's what i mean this is kind of like what my degree was all about like this is the discussions that we were having and i think they're incredibly important but after those discussions you know like i want to see like I, I want to see what steps we can we can take to actually change stuff and and it uh, the steps are never there. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole process. It's not something that you probably will see like in no. fifty years. <laughs> not in our lifetime, hun. Yeah. We're all like we're almost like quarter quarter half well qu- quarter of a way there. Imagine like in a hundred years they look back and they're like, oh yeah, they were a capitalist society. <laughs> like we were used to see like the I don't know yeah like the Romans or shit like that. What do you think is next? Oh, dictatorship know. from the sti- Skynet <laughs> or something. <laughs> probably I mean we could b- go back to di- dictatorship you know Polish people we've got a lot of experience with that I feel mm. like we can adapt real quick <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be like another dictator fine <laughs> we've got this in the bag <laughs> sure. um, um, but yeah that was my last your last question, question. I don't uh, know if how, you have something like else. how many how many minutes are we on this is probably they really put it in here in seconds what they put it in seconds. Oh my god! So it's like can we convert? Oh, it's almost two hours. Oh my god! Yeah. You know what I was thinking? Uh, we can fix this in post. Um, <laughs> that if you want to do like the hot takes, as kind of like an extra bit. So now you know, like hot takes, like really quickly. Um, you know, like a couple of prompts. Because I told you what hot takes are, right? Yeah, but I didn't really understand. Okay, so it's like a strong opinions. I get that. It's but like what a, about the it's prompt? like a polarizing opinion. So it's like something. It's something that doesn't necessarily come with. Wait, I think I even have like a. Do you want to do it now, or do you want to like put it like later as a as an extra, like you know, like a small extra episode, like I don't know, six point five. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, actually, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll just like make the outro. Well, you'll make the outro, and okay. after that, we can record that part. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are we doing it now? Are we? Yeah, Sasha, you're on the spot, right? Oh my god! You have ten seconds. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you for listening, and we'll have the outro with Sasha right now. Um, yeah, Kenneth informed me that I'm supposed to prepare an outro, uh, which I didn't do. Um, but thank you so much for having me. I hope it was more or less entertaining (laughs) and um yeah you can find me on my only (laughs) fans and um yeah if um if anyone has any questions or whatever like if they want to discuss anything that i said on the podcast in more details feel free to hit me up uh but other than that thank you so much for having me